In today's episode, you'll learn the differences between four salon shapes and see how to build step-by-step -step an almond, a ballerina, a square and an oval. We'll also show you our new spectacularly shiny shades from the Indigo Mini Collection. Hi, my name is Connie and this is a channel dedicated to the art of nail styling. Today, we will show you the types and differences between salon nail shapes, almond, square, oval and ballerina. Let's start with the product we'll use today. A 100 to 180 grit file, a cupcake brush, wooden sticks, indigo cuticle bit number nine, indigo cuticle bit number one, a 180 to 220 buffer, cleaner number one, perfect base, indigo two-in-one gel brush number six, purple forms, form scissors, easy shape light rose, cleaner wipe off, easy shape milky pink, pinching tweezers, self-leveling 70 in white, Master Nail Art 007 brush, self-leveling 70 in porcelain, lint-free pads, gel polishes in Lance Bounce, Flashback, Disco Polar, Goldminator, and Tip Top. Almond Oval Ballerina Square. Many clients mean many tastes and needs and many renditions of this question too. Can we do this styling on my hands? To be able to answer this question well, we need to first and foremost know the basics of each of these shapes and secondly, know which one can be matched to each type of nail. We have a lot of work to do today, so let's get started. We start by shortening all the nails to zero. We place the file at a 90 degree angle to the natural nail plate. The most important thing to remember is rounding the corners. If they're too sharp, they can push out the form when we try to place it. We dust off the surface using the cupcake brush. Using a wooden stick, we peel off the cuticles from the nail plate. We work using the side of the slanted tip to avoid hurting the client. We work from right to left using a pushing and opening motion. Then check if all the cuticles are properly detached from the plate. If we can feel something is still stuck down, we continue to open them up. Using the indigo cuticle bit number nine, we remove the residue left on the nail plate. We work in a push sweep motion at a 90 degree angle to the cuticle line, flat against the nail. We set the e-file power to about seven to 8,000 RPM. We dust off the surface and reach for the indigo cuticle bit number one. We move it from the center of the nail wall to the left edge. We open up the nail fold, creating the so-called corridor and repeat the action on all nails. Then switch the rotation direction and work from the center to the right. We file so that the edge of the bit hides under the nail fold. Notice that here we don't drive the bit along the nail plate as its belly would eat into the surface. We hold it at a 45 degree angle to the nail wall using only the bit's cheek. We dust off the nail. Our model's cuticles are very flexible so we cut them out with nippers before applying the gel. We drive the tool from right to left, holding the blades flat against the skin. We match the plate using a 180 grit buffer. We move from the middle to the left, directing the rounded side of the tool towards the cuticles. Thanks to this, any potential skin hangs will be removed by the buffer. Just to be sure, we can also run over the cuticles with the 220 grit side of the buffer. We dust off and move on to dehydrating the plate. We wipe the nails thoroughly with cleaner number one, then reach for the acid-free primer and apply it to the entire nail plate as if we wanted to cover it with regular nail polish. Time to rub in the base. We drop a bit of perfect base and rub it in using the rounded side of the Indigo 2-in-1 gel brush number six, then cure in the lamp for 60 seconds. Let's start with an ultra feminine proposal for fans of long, slender nails. First up is the almond. The first step is preparing the form. Because the glue on the form is very strong and tends to stick to gloves, we don't peel it off the backing yet, but start with the trim. First, we cut out the egg and place the form on the finger. Our model's nail is growing slightly downwards. When we place the file along the finger's axis, we can see the tip of the nail is drooping. We'll make an almond, so we place the form slightly upwards. We can see that some gaps have appeared in the natural nail growth point, so we need to trim the depth of the form. We smooth out the rance so that the form fits well. Once we see it does, we peel it off the backing, 
place it on the finger and stick down the tips. We'll be building an almond so we pinch the form three points further than the intended length. We want to build the nail up to number four, so we close the form at number seven. Thanks to this, we won't need to use pinching tweezers. The tunnel will be created on the form. Our model's nail tilts slightly to one side, so we adjust the form in line with the finger's axis. We'll use the easy shape light rose gel to build the nail. We pick up a ball of product and spread the frame from the desired length towards the free edge. We set the final shape straight away to minimize the need to file later. It's important that the side edges of the nail run straight out of the natural plate and then round towards the tip. Just to be safe, we can leave an extra millimeter of product on the side so that we have something to file down to perfect the shape. We do the same thing on the other side, driving the edge straight out and leaving a bit extra. The free edge of the natural nail should be surrounded by product from all sides. We neutralize the ridge by stroking the surface of the gel using just the tip of the brush moving upwards. Easy Shape Light Rose is a thick gel with a jelly-like consistency, which is why we can take our time to distribute it precisely along the nail. It will stay exactly where we place it. We cure it in the lamp for 30 seconds. We peel off the form from each of the sides and take it off by pulling from below. Voila, the frame of our almond is ready. We apply a slip layer to the entire surface of the nail, both on the natural nail plate and the extension. We're careful not to flood the cuticles. We pick up a ball of product and place it in the apex area. We can put any excess back into the jar. We spread the ball with a brush, driving it flat under the cuticles. We work in a push and grab motion first from the left, then the right side. Once we secure the area under the cuticles, we continue moving flat in a chevron pattern, dragging the product from left to right. If we notice an air bubble on the surface, we work till it's completely gone. Then continue with the chevron motion, bit by bit towards the free edge. We return any excess product to the jar. A so-called duck break has appeared on our free edge, which we need to even out. We do it by driving the brush at a 90 degree angle to the surface of the gel. We dip the tip of the bristles about a millimeter into the gel and using gentle, long motions smooth out the surface. We check the height of the apex, which should sit at one third of the natural nail's length. In an almond, the upper arch should drop down from the apex to the end of the nail. Once we're certain the curvatures are properly formed, we put the hand into the lamp for 60 seconds. Thanks to a proper trim of the form at the beginning, we don't have to pinch the tunnel any further now. We remove the dispersion layer with the wipe-off cleaner and move on to filing. Using the 180 grit side of a file, we shorten the nail and create the almond shape using motions resembling playing the violin. We work on each side of the extended tip. We file one side up to the apex using round motions, then proceed in the same manner on the other side. If we notice uneven areas or see-through parts, we can still fix them at this stage. We move onto the area by the cuticles. We work using the rounded side of the file towards the apex from one and the other side. If the dust is collecting in the area by the cuticles, it means the surface is not polished well enough yet. To have better access to it, we can gently pull back the nail wall. Then we lower the apex if it sits too high. Clients do not like a high arch. The built nail needs to look natural. We work from the nail wall towards us, then even out the surface, moving across it up and down. Then we work on the edges. We twist the hand to the side and place the file along the middle axis of the finger. Using the straight side of the tool, we dig slightly under the edge of the nail so that we can only see the edge of the file. We use short motions along the natural nail's edge. We round the edges towards the tip. We drive the side edges straight for a few millimeters, then round them up towards the edge of the nail. At the end, we check that the nail is symmetrical. Then check the thickness of the nail, looking down the barrel of the tunnel and even it out if necessary. We mat the entire surface with a 220 grit buffer from the middle to the left and then to the right. We can also run the buffer along the cuticles to future smooth them out. We dust off the nail with a soft brush. And that's our almond done. Let's move on to the ballerina. Pay attention to how our stylist spreads the product whilst building the frame 
and the technique she uses to file down the side walls, because these are the two most important elements differentiating the ballerina from the almond. Let's take a look. We prep the nail plate as we did the previous nail. However, in a ballerina, we'll be placing the form straight on. As we can see gaps on the sides, we need to trim the form just like we did in the almond. We make sure it fits, peel it off its backing and pinch it just like in an almond. Three spaces further than the desired length. As we want to extend to number three, we're pinching at number six. This time, we'll use the easy shape milky pink to build the nail. We'll build the frame a little differently than we did in an almond. We start at the free edge and drag the product to the desired length. We place a crescent of gel on the free edge. We move flat up and down all the way to the chosen length. We create the ballerina shape. From the top, it may resemble a narrowing square, but there's nothing more deceiving. If we were to compare the ballerina to any other shape, it would rather be a beveled stiletto. We even out the connection between the natural nail plate and the extension so that there is no visible ridge. We move up and down using the tip of the brush. We turn the hand around to check on the side edges. They should be coming out straight from the natural nail. There should be no rounding on either side. We cure it in the lamp for 30 seconds. We take off the form, detach the top wings and gently pull it downwards. In the case of a ballerina, the tunnel should be very well defined. Ours looks great, so we don't need to use tweezers. We apply a slip layer of gel along the whole length of the nail. We pick up a ball of product, roll it and place it in the apex area. We can gently round the ball with our brush. Then we move the product towards the cuticles using push gather motions. We work flat using the Indigo 2-in-1 gel brush number six. An air bubble appeared in the mass, so we flatten it until it disappears. Using a smile motion, we drive the product towards the end of the nail. The last step is dragging the leftover product from the brush along the edge of the nail. We even out the tip with a brush held at a 90 degree angle, gently stroking its surface till it's nice and smooth. The walls of a ballerina should be straight, not curved. We correct them if necessary. Then cure in the lamp for 60 seconds. We remove the dispersion layer with wipe off cleaner. We place a 180 grit file at a right angle to the edge to gently shorten the nail. We work on the side edges, directing the file into a V-shape. We rest the file on the index finger and work so as to only see the edge of the tool and get rid of any excess material. First on one side, then the middle, and then the other side. At the end, we smooth out the surface, working from right to left, placing the file flat to the surface. We even out the extension zone so that the upper arch drops from the apex to the tip. We work from the left to the middle and from the right to the middle, facing the rounded side of the nail towards the nail fold. We drive the side edges straight, parallel to the central axis of the finger. We work in short movements to avoid filing through the edges. We repeat the action on the other side. To finish off, we check if the edges are on the same level and correct if necessary. We also check that the edges lie at a 90 degree angle. We check on the state of the nail from the tunnel's perspective, making sure there is a correct amount of product and that the thickness is all right. If something is wrong, we correct it. Dust off the entire nail, mat it with a 220 grit buffer and dust it off again. Time for the square. This time, instead of jelly, we'll use a self-leveling gel, which is a perfect solution for styling shorter nails. Look how much time you can save by reaching for our self-leveling products. To build the square, we'll use the self-leveling white 90 gel. We've prepped this nail just like the previous two. Once the perfect base coat is cured, we move to adjust the form. To build a square, we need to place the form in a straight line to the axis of the finger. If the nail is growing downwards, we place the form upwards so the extended nail doesn't droop. The form fits, but it's leaning down a little, so we need to trim its depth to build the form higher and achieve a thin hairline. Once we know the form fits well, we can stick it down. In a square, we don't pinch the edge of the form, only the wings under the fingertip keeping the form open. We spread the frame just like in a ballerina. We place a crescent of gel onto the free edge and drag the material up to the desired length. For us, that's number two on the form. We can drag out about a millimeter extra so we have some leeway for filing. If the edge seems jagged, we can wipe it into the desired shape with the square side of the brush. We even out the ridge between the free edge and the extension, then cure in the lamp for 60 seconds. 
we detach the foam and gently pull it off. Once the surface is wiped with wipe-off cleaner, we move on to filing down the shape so that the edges meet at a 90-degree angle. We even out the side edges too so that there's not much filing left once the nail is fully built. We wipe again with wipe-off cleaner. We place a slip layer along the whole nail and prepare the thin Master Nail Art 007 brush which will help us place the gel. We pick up a ball and place it around the apex, rolling it upwards with a circular motion. We drag the product towards the cuticles. We don't have to even it out, it will slide in there and level out by itself. Driving the brush from one edge to the other in a smile line, we drag the ball up to the middle of the nail. Using the tip of the 007 brush, we pull the product towards the edge of the nail. If we tilt our client's hand down, the force of gravity will help us get the gel there quicker. We flip the hand back and even the gel out. We pull the gel from the tip and drive it back towards the apex to avoid the duck beak. If necessary, we can flip the hand down one more time. Gravity will smooth out the surface beautifully. We place the hand in the lamp. After 10 seconds, we can take it out to pinch the tunnel. If we decide to do it, it's important to apply the tweezers from below the nail. We pinch to achieve straight sides to our square, remove the tweezers and put the hand back in the lamp for 60 seconds. We wipe the surface with wipe-off cleaner and start filing down the shape. We drive the 180 grit side of the file at a 90 degree angle so that only the edge of the tool is visible. We work on the side edge just like in a ballerina, the only difference being we continue working parallel to the finger's axis. We straighten the walls and remove any excess material from the nail width. Then we file the surface of the nail flat, driving the file up and down towards the apex from left to right, controlling the amount of product and the width of the hairline. We check the thickness of the nail and apply any corrections. Driving the file with the rounded side facing the cuticles, we move from the left to the middle, then from the right to the middle. We file the sides straight along the axis of the finger, keeping the file at such an angle that shows only its profile. Looking at the nail from above, we make sure the shape is symmetrical. If not, we rest the whole surface of the file onto the nail plate and even it out. We check the hairline and the amount of product along the entire length of the extended nail and correct it if necessary. The self-leveling white gel doesn't give full coverage, so it will be slightly see-through by the cuticles, making the design look more natural. We mat the surface with a 220 grit buffer. If the client doesn't like the sharp corners of the square, we can round them slightly so they're a little more practical. We dust off the whole nail using a cupcake brush. That's it. Our square is done and our work went super fast because we opted for the self-leveling gel. Does this mean jelly-like gels are out of style? Absolutely not. There are tons of fans of this type of gel. It's important to understand that just like in life outside of nail styling, people have their own preferences and stick to them. For example, some like savory crepes and some like them sweet. And that's okay. It's the same with product choice. The key is to get to know each of them and pick the one that suits us most. All right, here we are chit-chatting and the time has come for the last but most universal of all shapes, the oval. Once the nail plate is prepped, and the perfect base coat cured, we move on to placing the form. In an oval, we place the form straight on. In this case, the upper arch should fall slightly towards the edge of the nail. Our model's nail is growing slightly downwards. In this case, however, we will be trimming the form's depth to make sure it matches the side growth points well. Once we know the form fits perfectly, we can stick it down. We close all of the bottom wing sets up to the perforation. A stencil for an oval can be left open or gently pinched at the end. In our case, the form seems to be wider than our model's natural nail, so we need to cut into it to release the fingertip. We cut at a 45 degree angle up to the last white horizontal line. We cut out a triangle on each side, creating the so-called cat ears. We slim down the form, rolling it slightly so it sits better. We can see that now the form matches the width of the natural nail. We build our oval using the self-leveling 70 gel in porcelain. We spread the frame from the free edge to the desired length, just like we did in an almond. The shape of our brush helps us achieve the oval outline. The edges run straight, then round towards the tip. We even out the joint between the natural plate and the extension and cure it for 30 seconds. We detach the form from each side and pull it down. Just like with the square, we can file the shape of the frame down at this stage. We wipe the surface gently with wipe-off cleaner 
and round the free edge to the desired shape with a file. The tunnel in this shape is a lot more subtle than in the previous shapes. We wipe again with Wipe Off Cleaner. Time for the slip layer. In the meantime, we prepare the 007 brush to apply the gel. We pick up a ball, smaller than the last time because the shape is shorter. We place it in the apex area, round it with the brush and put any excess back into the jar. We push the product towards the cuticles, then spread it up to the middle of the nail, left and right, and using the thin Master Nail Art 007 brush, we drag it towards the edge of the nail. If too much product ends up on the tip, we can collect it and put it back into the jar. We flip the hand around. In the end, we smooth the surface using a thin brush and then cure it in the lamp for 60 seconds. We remove the dispersion layer with Wipe Off Cleaner. First, we shorten the nail slightly and file away any excess product from the side walls. We work the surface of the sides towards the center of the nail. There is a lot less filing here than in extensions made with a jelly-like gel, which is why self-leveling gels speed up our work so much. We move in a rounded motion from the edge towards the apex. By the cuticles, we use the rounded side of the file, moving from the left to the middle and from the right to the middle. Then we smooth out the surface in the opposite direction from the middle to the right and the left. If the dust collects in by the cuticles, it means the surface isn't smooth enough yet. We drive the edges out parallel to the finger's middle axis and round them towards the tip. We flip the hand to check if the shape is even. At the very end, looking at the nail down the tunnel, we check the level of material and if necessary, correct it with a file. In an oval, just like in an almond, we drive the file in rounded motions towards the middle of the nail. We map the styling with a 220 grit buffer, not forgetting about the edges. We dust the nail off and wipe it with Wipe Off Cleaner. Here we have all four shapes we made today. It's perfectly clear they differ not only in their appearance, but above all in the method they are made with. How we apply the gel, how we pinch the tunnel, how we file them, etc. And in order to create each one of these shapes perfectly, we need to keep an eye on all of the elements we discuss in today's episode. And now it's time, even though we love nude nails today, we're gonna go wild. We're gonna show you some shimmers. First up is Lance Bounce, which we throw onto the index finger. A black shade that sparkles with silver holographic particles is a combination of elegance and disco madness. It's perfect for the festive carnival season, not just for a crazy party girl, but also for a refined madame. Flashback lands on the middle finger, a slightly lighter graphite shade with equally wild sparkle. What memories will it bring back for you? Our next sparkle is the phenomenal Disco Polar, which enchants with a silvery shimmering surface. Finally, let me introduce you to a real superstar. The pure gold goldminator certainly won't escape the attention of a nail magpie, and its holographic silver gold particles will successfully replace any party jewelry. We apply each shade of the sparkles in two layers, curing each one in the lamp for 30 seconds. We secure the nails with tip top and cure them again for 30 seconds. To finish off, we can gently pull the nail walls back down to achieve the effect of color growing out from underneath the cuticles. We polish each nail with a dry pad and it's ready. And this is the end of our episode. Let us know in those comments below which shape is your client's favorite and which one you wear most often. I'll see you next Wednesday. Bye.